the following model shows ovarian cycle ovulation and first week of development till implantation the structures present are your uterus the fallopian tube and the ovary the uterus contains the fundus the body and the wall of the uterus the wall of the uterus contains the inner endometrium the middle myometrium and the outermost perimetrium the fallopian tube contains three major parts the isthmus ampulla and the infundibulum at the end of the infundibulum you can see these finger like projections called fimbriae that is responsible for picking up the ovum that has ovulated out of the ovary inside the ovary the ovarian cycle is going on let's look at the various stages of first week of development along with ovulation and the ovarian cycle so inside the ovary ovarian cycle is going on where you can see various follicles the one that you really need to remember is the graafian follicle cuz graafian follicle ruptures and ovulation takes place and the unfertilized ovum gets ovulated out of the ovary a lot of ov okay so here's the unfertilized ovum that contains the secondary oocyte surrounded by zona pellucida surrounded by corona radiata the remnant part of the graafian follicle it dies off or degenerates first corpus luteum is formed and then the scar tissue corpus albicans is formed first corpus luteum then corpus albicans this ovum unfertilized ovum is then picked by the fimbria of infundibulum inside the fallopian tube the ovum it receives multiple sperms however it fertilizes with only one single sperm this is what you call conception or the fertilization of ovum after fertilization of ovum takes place zygote formation takes place at this particular stage the zygote is in the form of pronuclei stage you can see the two polar body and the two pronuclei as well the male pronucleus and the female pronucleus the male pronucleus and the female pronucleus they fuse to form a diploid zygote which goes through mitosis or cleavage in this stage you can see the very first mitotic division of the zygote here are the two polar body and here's the mitosis going on after the first mitosis takes place the zygote forms a two cell stage which further goes through the process of cleavage and gives rise to a 16 cell stage called morula which is present at the end of fallopian tube inside the uterus the morula it goes through the process of blastulation to form blastocyst by the way all the structures are still inside zona pellucida they have not come out of the zona pellucida it is the blastocyst that finally hatches out of the zona pellucida how so inside the zona pellucida enter the endometrial fluid the endometrial fluid exerts pressure on the wall or the zona pellucida the zona pellucida ruptures and the blastocyst comes out so here's the blastocyst this is the cavity of the blastocyst called blastocell this is embryoblast which forms the future embryo and this is tropoblast which forms the future cytotropoblast and in situ tropoblast blastocyst in, gets implanted at its embryonic pole let's look at the different types of implantation so implantation that takes place within the uterus is the uterine implantation any implantation outside the uterus is extra uterine or ectopic implantation and all ectopic implantations are abnormal normally implantation is to be taken place inside the uterus however abnormally ectopic implantations also take place there are three major types of ectopic implantation three major types within the ovary you have ovarian implantation within the fallopian tube you have tubal implantation and in the abdominal cavity or the cavity behind the uterus called retrouterine cavity you get abdominal implantation the most common ectopic implantation among the three implantations is tubal implantation and within tubal implantation the most common ectopic implantation is the one within the ampulla okay now let's look at uterine implantation within uterus the most common site for implantation is on the 
upper posterior wall of uterus. However, sometimes implantation can take place at the opening of the cervix. As a result, the placenta formation takes place in such a way that it completely blocks the opening of the cervix and this condition is what we call placenta previa. This model shows the 20th day of embryonal development. So what are the various structures you can see? First thing, this model right here is the dorsal view of the human embryo. It is the dorsal view. Now let's look at the various structure. The embryo that is shown by this model is the structure right after the formation of neural plate. So after the formation of neural plate, two things form the neural fold and the neural groove. So here's the neural fold and then here's the neural groove, which continues in the form of primitive streak. This is the cortex of amnion. And then you can see your yolk sac right here. Now, it is during the 20th day of development that the somites start to develop. In this embryo as well, the somites have already started to develop. If you count the number of somites, you can see that there are three pairs of somites. Now, there are three informations that you know. During 20th day of embryonal development, a total of one to four pairs of somites are formed. During 21st day of embryonal development, a total of four to seven pairs of somites are formed. During 22nd day of embryonal development, a total of seven to 10 pairs of somites are formed. So how many somites are here? One, two, three, three pairs of somites are there. So obviously this development stage is that of 20th day of embryonal development. It is your 20th day. Let's look at this structure. So here, there's your neural, neural fold. The primitive streak is already gone. There are two structures that you need to know. This bulge that you see right here is your pericardial bulge. And this area denoted by number nine is your otic placard. There's your yolk sac and cortex of amnion as usual. Let's count the number of somites. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are altogether eight pairs of somites. And I said that seven to 10 pairs of somites are formed during which day of embryonal development? During 22nd day. So which day of embryonal development is this model showing? The 22nd day of embryonal development. You can see this table right here as well. By the way, what's the source in, in the rubber sink? During 20th day, one to four pairs of somites are formed. 21st day, four to seven pairs of somites are formed. 22nd day, seven to 10 pairs of somites are formed. The blastocyst gets implanted in the endometrium of the uterine wall. Once the blastocyst gets implanted, it gets completely inserted inside the endometrium. Due to its circular structure, a bulge is created in the endometrium or the wall of endometrium is, is divided or separated into two layers. One towards the abembryonic pole and the other towards the embryonic pole. The part of the endometrium into which the blastocyst gets implanted or the part of the endometrium that is responsible for the embryonal development of blastocyst or the functional part of endometrium is what we call decidua. So this whole layer that is shown in yellow is your decidua, which contains three major parts. So the part of the decidua that is towards the embryonal pole of blastocyst and which is responsible for the formation of placenta is decidua basalis. The part of the decidua that forms a capsule around the embryo and separates the embryo from the rest of the uterus is your decidua capsularis. And then the rest of the decidua is what you call decidua parietalis. Out of all these three parts, I want you to remember decidua basalis. You'll know soon enough. Okay, let's look at the embryonal side now. So here's the developing embryo. The embryo contains chorion. The chorion contains three layers, the somatopleuric extra embryonal mesoderm, the cytotropoblast and the syncytiotropoblast. The chorion gives rise to villi. So these are your villi. Villi arises on all sides of the embryo, all throughout the embryo, all throughout the embryo. 
However, as the embryo grows, the villi that is present on the side of decidua capsularis gets crushed and degenerated. Again, here's your decidua basalis, here's your decidua capsularis, and the rest is decidua parietalis. The villi towards decidua capsularis gets degenerated. So only the villi towards decidua basalis remains. And the whole chorion of the embryo is divided into two parts. The one with villi, which is called chorion frondosum, and the one without villi, which is called chorion leaf. It is the chorion frondosum that is responsible for the formation of placenta. So what are the two structures I want you to remember? From maternal side, decidua basalis and from petal side chorion frondosum these two together form the placenta for the developing baby okay now let's look at this spot or this model right here this model contains your primary villi how do i know that okay first let's look at the structures this part is your decidua basalis it contains endometrial glands as well as maternal blood vessels this part is the chorion, which contains the somatopleuric layer of extra embryonal mesoderm sewn in pink. This blue part is your cytotropoblast and the outermost green part is the syncytotropoblast. Now, you can see that the villi, it contains cytotropoblast. The total of villi is made up of cytotropoblast. So this is your primary villi. But then let's say this pink part entered this blue part. So you had your blue part inside of which there was pink part, which is somatopleuric layer of extra embryonal mesoderm. Then it would have been secondary villi. Again, there's your blue part inside of which there's your pink part. And in pink part, there is also blood vessel. Then it would have been your tertiary villi. In between villi, there's your black space. This is representing the intervillous space. You can see right here. So there's your blue part or cytotropoblast, right? And the, the cytotropoblast is now filled with the extra embryonal mesoderm or the pink part. However, along with that, there are also blood vessels, the fetal blood vessel. So this is your tertiary villi. Tertiary villi is what is found in your placenta. Tertiary villi is found in placenta. Talking about placenta, here's your placenta. So which side of the placenta is this? This is the fetal side. How do I know that? Because I can see the part where the umbilical cord inserts and I can also see the umbilical blood vessels coming out of the, of the umbilical cord. The placenta contains tertiary villi. Okay, this placenta, this side is also your fetal side. How do I know that? Because here's the umbilical cord and then there's the umbilical vessel which further bifurcates into chorionic vessel. This is placenta as well. However, this is not the fetal side. This is the maternal side. How do I know that? Because there is no place for insertion of your umbilical cord. Plus, it gives off a cobblestone appearance due to the presence of cotyledons. There are altogether 15 to 20 cotyledons present on the maternal side of placenta. This right here. Okay. This contains your placenta and then the umbilical cord. The structure that is sewn tied with a rope, tied with a thread, that's your umbilical cord. The content of umbilical cord is AVA. That is, there are altogether two umbilical arteries carrying deoxygenated blood and one umbilical vein carrying oxygenated blood. This model is showing the pharyngeal arches. So there's your first pharyngeal arch, second pharyngeal arch, third pharyngeal arch and fourth pharyngeal arch. But then the sixth pharyngeal arch is not sewn. The first pharyngeal arch contains two lateral lingual swelling and a single medial tuberculum impar. And just below the tuberculum impar is your foramen cecum. Within the fourth pharyngeal arch is an orifice called laryngeal orifice. These swellings, they merge to form the developing tongue which you can see right here. So there's the first pharyngeal arch, second pharyngeal arch, third pharyngeal arch, and fourth pharyngeal arch. The fourth pharyngeal arch still contains the laryngeal orifice. And the first pharyngeal arch contains the forming tongue. So the two, two models is actually showing you the development of tongue. So you can see the development of tongue in this diagram as well. 
So this is how development of Tong takes place. And if you want all these slides, you can get it in the pinned comment down below. With that, see you.